Hi, good morning again. And we'll continue our study and discussion on the Christian worldview. And this is our number six class. So last week, uh, we stopped at the uh, discussion of dichotomy in the worldview. Like I said uh, last week, the worldview, we have discussed about the definition and the concept. That, that was a, a major part of uh, class one, two, and three. And we have discussed uh, the role, the functions of worldview, what the worldview does to you and uh, to, to your life. What's the importance? And then we had discussed the characteristic, main characteristics of worldview. And these are from the, uh, the, the ideas from the last week, and we will continue on the, our discussion based on these concepts. Again, dichotomy means two. Daiko means two separated. So two bipolar, divided, uh, to descend and descend. Like uh, e east is far from the west. So that's bipolar. And as you live in this world, this reality, the context that we live in, we experience these dichotomies. And every culture, every culture does have one or several idea of dichotomy domains and domains the area, the region, the, 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 the territory. So we people wants to divide. In a, uh, in a very systematic way. In that way, we feel comfortable. We feel safe knowing where I belong, which is which. See, th 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 let me give you an example. We have names. What does names do? It separates one person to the other. And if you have the same name, then you put something else in front of it or behind it to make the distinction. So we feel safe when the objects are distinguished, when we can recognize it, when we can identify that, then we feel safe. So that's the reason people try to separate into a certain uh, system. And one of the main examples of this in worldview is dichotomy. It is strange that uh, many does not have trichotomy, meaning the three different uh, separations, but basically it has two, uh, because it's easier probably. And the world, uh, as God constructed it and created it, God had the idea of this dichotomy, I, I believe. So again, two worlds. Uh, last week I have uh, explained a little bit about the seen and unseen world. The world beyond this life, is not visible. We have not experienced it. The world that we live in here, we have experienced it. We know it. We understand it. So that's a sin world. You can touch it. You can feel. You can uh, even manipulate over it. But the unseen world, the heaven. The, the, uh, the world beyond this one, you, you do not have control, you, you haven't seen it. You have probably heard about it, 
some, some say it's just an imagination. No, I don't think so. Uh, there is a world beyond this one. There's life beyond this one. It's unseen. Uh, and there is spirits, there are angels, which are not visible. The Holy Spirit is not visible. But Jesus Christ, the, uh, the uh, son of Joseph, uh, the uh, Jesus of Nazareth, he was visible. So he belongs to this seen, visible world, while the Holy Spirit belongs to unseen world. The Father God belongs to unseen world. The angels belongs to unseen world. Unless, for example, the Michael comes, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel comes and give this news to uh, the Maria, uh, the Jesus' mother, then he is making himself visible because God told him to make himself known and visible. So angels are only visible when he chooses to. But until then, it's unseen world. For us, I mean, all the cultures have certain way of dividing this seen and unseen world. So that is related to the next uh, dichotomy, physical and non-physical. Physical world, again, is visible. You can touch it, you can see it. The non-physical, that's something that you cannot touch. The ideas, the concepts, the imaginations, these are non-physical. The mental psychology, these are non-physical. The love, emotions, these are not physical. Your body is physical. The nature is a physical. So these are some examples. Again, sacred and secular. Uh, this, this, this might be this might be the, one of the major topics that when you are dealing with a religion, and it is probably the most critical for any person who is spiritual. Because every person we have spirituality. Spirituality says you should be able to decide and determine and 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 uh, uh, validate which is sacred and which is secular. And all the religion, uh, uh, I mean, all the good religion uh, has a way of dividing secular and sacred. Sacred means that something belongs to divine domain. It's godly domain. Because it's godly, it is, has more of value. It's above this. The secular is something that is temporary. It doesn't last long. While the sacred, it does not change. It's eternal many times. While the secular is temporary. Secular many times is negative. While sacred is more positive. Not always, but most of time. Uh, sacred means it's positive. It's something of value. There's something beyond the, your control. And you want to get into the sacred if you're a religious, if you're a spiritual person. Secular deals we usually with the seen world and physical world. While sacred uh, usually, not always, usually deals with non-physical and unseen world. Sacred is 
more of something that of divine domain while secular is human domain but now the problem is uh, when people try to uh, when when your worldview says sacred is good while secular is evil uh, while we say sacred is good uh, good and the secular is bad when you put that kind of connotation or meaning or value to these two then we have some issues and people are confused and even in christianity you say you're a believer and not every believer is the same i told you that every individual may have a different world view same for christianity every christian has a different world view but uh, the bible is only the uh, white uh, standard the authority of interpreting the proper world view and uh, some say the bible teaches secular and uh, sacred and it says sacred is good while secular is bad but what if your job your work is categorized under secular then your work your your uh, toil and the, your sweat and then earning the money to feed your children is it bad is it evil so th these are uh, like uh, some issues that we face uh, today in a uh, uh, modern christianity and uh, people are confused they, and the Christians don't know. Some some Christians don't know how to separate sacred and secular. So these these are some examples of dichotomy, meaning two different worlds. Both these worlds are separated but interconnected. So that's that's where the issues are. Some people believe these two world domains are separated and never interconnected so even though you believe in two different worlds you say i say there's a secular and sacred world and that another person says i agree but that doesn't mean that you agree and have the same world view because i believe the sacred and a secular world are interconnected closely related while he or she says no, they are not connected. That's two different worlds, and you cannot uh, re, uh, stay or in the se uh, sec sacred, uh, uh, sacred, uh, secular while you're in the, in the sacred world. So that's totally different worldview. So even though you may have the same dichotomy, that does not mean that you share the same worldview. Again this world and that world uh, this it has to do with the, the first seen and unseen uh, but this world uh, some say there's no that world because it's unseen because you haven't seen it uh, that there's no that's not a reality okay that again that was a reality so some people believe that's not the reality, but I believe so. So if you believe that world, now the question is, what kind of world is that world? So there are different ideas. Buddhists believe a certain idea. Uh, Muslim believes a certain, they have certain idea about that world. And traditional Korean folk religion, uh, they have a different idea about the life beyond this one so the question is do you believe there is a life beyond this one if there is and if you say there is one then what kind of world is there and then that next question can be how are you going to uh, enter that world because uh, usually when you believe in that world beyond this one there's a good one and bad one how and heaven right so uh, how do you get to heaven uh, and the good good uh, one uh, avoiding the evil 
So that's another question. So each world view is related to uh, the, the next another uh, world view. That's why it's uh, like a puzzle. So each puzzle, these are like a puzzle pieces uh, you've got to put together. And we, we call congruent or coherent world view, which means all of these pieces are put together. We'll discuss this later, but uh, I, I like to give an uh, 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 idea ahead. So if you have a coherent, congruent uh, world view, then you're good. But if you don't, then you are in trouble uh, and you're confused. And there's all of this inner conflict because you do not have uh, this congruent world view. Many mental issues today rise from uh, having uh, these fragmented world views. They do not come together as one. And they do not make a one picture. So it's like a, have you played that uh, jigsaw puzzle? I'll talk about this later, but if you have, have it, you cannot put two different jigsaw puzzle together. And you, you, you cannot make up. I mean, it's impossible, right? So no, it's like having two or three different jigsaw puzzle sets put together and mixed and you're trying to come up with that one picture. I mean, that's, that's humanly impossible. And when you, you're put into that kind of situation and stage, then you're, you're confused and you have inner conflict. So, uh, this is a model uh, of some of the examples, secure and sacred. So if there's a verse or end, so see here, it says a verse, you, either secular verse sacred or secular and uh, sacred. If it's interconnected, you're going to put this together and become one. But some dichotomy is as is two separate uh, domains. They cannot come together. And the seen and unseen, uh, the same thing. So there is something that you're visible and that's invisible. If you try to separate these two, you say verse. But you could say seen and unseen. The reality says there's an unseen world. And as well, the seen. So these two worlds exist together at the same time. Now, the jigsaw puzzle is complicated world view. World view is puzzling. Puzzling, meaning it's like a, trying to put a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, three piece, four piece, five piece puzzle for children is still difficult. For, uh, for an adult, that's just a, it might take two seconds to put five piece uh, puzzle that uh, children's age uh, three to five play. But when it comes to 1,000 or 2,000 pieces puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, no, that's a different story. And the world we, <coughs> excuse me, world that we live in, the reality, and our existence, like I said, it is bombarded with the issues and problems. It's not that simple. I, I wish and hope that it was like a five-piece puzzle. And, uh, but life, as we know, as we know, it's not that simple. It's very complex. It has a lot of issues and problems. And People in history from the beginning try to answer why do we have all these issues and problems? Why is life is so complicated? Not only this complex, it's all uh, mingled together. 
So it's clicking. And uh, see, it has to do with some of these elements. First, dilemma. I'll explain that further. Human incapacity, meaning for us human beings are limited. Even though some believe that we are so powerful, we can do anything. If you believe, and you can, there's nothing that you cannot achieve. But matter of fact, it is. And we are limited. See, this tiny virus. I mean, supposedly, it, even you cannot uh, look uh, under under uh, normal uh, microscope. You, it takes a electronic microscope to see uh, the, the elements. These are little tiny things. That's controlling the whole earth now, and within just few months period. And uh, we cannot do anything about it. And people die, actually die from it. And that's, that's one aspect of human incapacity. We do not have control over even this tiny little uh, things. It's not even uh, full life. It's just a particle uh, with the uh, ability to propagate. Okay? Then also this complexity of the reality. Reality, as you see, the nature, trees, birds, and the insect, animal, and the fishes, and little tiny uh, organisms, and I mean birds alone, there are thousand thousand species, and within that species, uh, there are many variations. See, so reality in that that term is complex enough, but it is more complex when you look into the human life. There's nothing simple about human life. Okay, let's go into the dilemma, the topic of dilemma. Uh, dilemma, probably it's three C's. Uh, try to remember this. Uh, contradiction, conflict, and confusion. So this is the nature of dilemma. Contradiction. Many things that we see in human life is irrational, meaning it, logically you cannot explain some of the, 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 the acts, behaviors people do. Uh, it seems, seems irrational. Why do you need to stop up the, the, the paper towel, I mean, the, the uh, toilet paper, when the uh, virus is coming? It doesn't make sense. But they have their, their own rationality. So uh, after all, it does not mean it's totally irrational. They have certain uh, logics and reasons. But for us with a, a different world view, it's not rational. It can, it's not logical. And the thing is, because it contradicts, it disturbs peace. Why do I mention the peace? The worldview that we are having, uh, the reason for the worldview is that we can have safety, and then the worldview kind of it try it kind of gives the answer to the questions. It it explains the unknown phenomena and the mysteries, and these are the uh, basic functions as as we have discussed uh, before. These are the main functions of a uh, uh, worldview. So. Eventually, what do you is there to give you your identity and your, your safety and your peace? On the contrary, uh, some of the world view, because of the, the difference of the world view, I told you that uh, we, we talked about is it my world view or your world view? Because we do not share the same world view, 
the world you can crash it come across the conflict and when it happens contradiction happens that's the part of dilemma dilemma it need to be resolved because with the dilemma there is no peace so when there, there are contradictions it, it goes against your peace Again, the conflict is similar to the contradiction, uh, but the contra contradiction is there, uh, having differences, two different explanations, two different understandings, each uh, making uh, different suggestions. That's contradict. But when two contradiction crashes, and there's that conflict and tension. So it causes tension. Tension is, it also disturbs your peace. When, when there's tension, people feel this friction. It hurts. And conflict hurts. While the contradiction is there, just uh, making you unsafe, disturbed. But the, when there's conflict, it's going to hurt either one of the parties or both. Usually both, right? So conflicts hurt those involved. And uh, is that unresolved tension. So uh, what does the world need to do? Either through the paradigm shift or change of world view, we need to come to the uh, to the peace. Uh, I mean, no tension. You have to lessen or remove the tension through the world view change. And then confusion. Uh, when you are suggest suggested with uh, uh, several different world views on the same subject, for example. Okay, let's, let's uh, think of this coronavirus uh, 19. Some, some pastors uh, preach that this is the wrath of God. Just like the wrath of God uh, was upon the, uh, the people of Israel when they were out of Egypt. Because they disobeyed. God has given them the, the troubles and problems and the of plagues and these things. Okay, so some taking that uh, biblical narrative say this is the wrath of God and caused because of our human uh, iniquity. It's, it's our fault. Uh, some, some, some sense say it's true to some degree, but it doesn't mean Will explain everything, and uh, so that's one world view. Another world view says it's just uh, you know lie. It's, it's false uh, news. It's wrong information. So they do not believe even that this coronavirus thing exists. So that's another world view. And the scientists give very different uh, versions of uh, this phenomenon. So you are presented with many different suggestions and, and the interpretations of current events. And we are confused. So this is not limited to just this corona pandemic, but it happens to all the subject matters. For example, a marriage. Today, many young uh, people do not believe that marriage is a necessity. It's not mandated. But in the old days, it was mandated. If you're not getting married, there's something wrong with you. But that's no longer a, 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 a story uh, for the younger generation today. But still, some young people 
are concerned. And they believe the marriage is uh, something that needs to be happening. So that's, again, confusion. So the dilemma, uh, the nature of the dilemma, it causes this thing. Okay, let's talk about uh, what kind of dilemma uh, does the world view has to face. Because world view is there to resolve these things. And uh, uh, world view is trying to deal with all these uh, questions that we face. So dilemma is one major question that people have to face as they try to deal with the reality and existence. Reality is something that is out there. Existence is how you are going to deal with this reality. So that those are the major two two uh, pillars, two topics that will to be dealt with. And uh, you see the dilemma in the reality and existence. So truth dilemma is the first one. What, uh, what is truth? And which is true? These are the main, main uh, question, main dilemma uh, all the people have to face. And honestly, when I ask you, what is truth? Can you, can you tell me that? And uh, which which truth is is the real real truth? Okay. So if you can tell me this with with a certainty and conviction, this is the truth that I believe. Yeah. You you have this uh, belief, and you 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 have a solid uh, system. Uh, the the first. Very, very uh, key uh, answer to the world view question, world view dilemma. So anyone and everyone have to, ha has to, has to resolve this dilemma, the truth dilemma. If you do not have resolved uh, this dilemma yet, and then your world view is not into a picture. You, your puzzle pieces are everywhere. You're still uh, at the very beginning. The, you're putting the first uh, jigsaw puzzle and then you're trying to put another one there. So first puzzle to resolve is the truth dilemma. The paradox dilemma. Many things in life that it, it's paradox. I'll try to explain. And there is a generic uh, dilemma. Let's go on to each one of them. So trust dilemma. Like I said, on what is truth? And uh, the truth by nature is, has to be one and only. So people say this is the truth, truth, this is the truth, and that's the truth, A, B, and C, and many others. But the, the nature of truth says there's only one truth and all others are not true. It's fake. It's near truth, but it is not truth. See, I, I'm, I'm trying to make this distinction. Near truth, very similar, but it is not truth unless it's a very real truth. So near truth does not count. And when it comes to the religion, religion deals with this matter of truth. And the, all the religion claims, my religion, our religion, this religion is true. So which one do you believe? Because religion deals with, uh, basically it deals with the whole human, uh, the, the identity of human and the meaning of life and it deals with the salvation. So these are some of the major subjects uh, the religion deals with. And the philosophy, 
deals with some other subjects, including uh, religious matters. But um, usually, uh, when we talk about philosophy, we exclude uh, this religious question. So philosophy is another way of trying to approach or, or find this truth dilemma. And the, the, only, the problem is there's only one truth. And you gotta, you got to make that paradigm shift or what of your decision about which is the truth. And Christianity says that Jesus Christ said, I am the uh, way, I am the light, I am the truth. See, that's a very bold claim to make as a person. And no one ever said that. No one ever said, I'm the truth, unless you're uh, crazy. I mean, there are many crazy people uh, in the institution say, I'm the truth. I mean, they, they can say that, but uh, can they prove it? And Jesus proved himself to be truth. And uh, the, the only truth comes from God. That's what uh, Jesus claimed. Because God is the origin of the whole world. Because he created the world and he has control of the world. Uh, he is the only one who claim who can claim the truth, and that uh, Jesus said, "I'm the Son of God and uh, and, and God Himself, and so I can claim the truth." So He said, "I'm the truth, I'm the way, I'm the life." So that when when someone makes claim like that, then our intelligence, our rational, has to you know uh, make response to that. So do I believe it or do I disbelieve it? Do I validate that, that and say, oh, it is valid or say it is false? So it is our responsibility as a person with the in intellectual uh, ability to make that decision. Uh, actually, it's, a, it's not an intellectual decision, it's a spiritual decision. Spirituality goes beyond the intellectual, it, it goes beyond the, your emotion, it, it goes be, beyond your experience. So that's a spiritual question. And the truth dilemma is a spiritual dilemma. Because truth has to be absolute. And it's indefinite, meaning it does not change. And it has to have that goodness. So any truth, it has to uh, uh, revive people. It has to give life. It has to have goodness. The evil cannot be categorized as or into truth. If it's a bad, if it's false, it says evil, that's not truth. So truth, it takes away, it throws away the evilness, badness, and unethicalness, and harm. All these things cannot come into truth. So, do you have that truth? Can you claim what you believe is true? Not only claim, can you prove that is the truth? And uh, only one person who did that is Jesus, uh, of the Christ of Nazareth. And uh, the Christians, I mean, as human beings, we have choice to make whether to investigate it, do the research and listen more to uh, Jesus' claim and make that decision. And if you have studied and if you have said, no, I cannot believe this, and then you have done your share. But that does not end there because you have to present uh, your own truth, what you believe to be true. Because without uh, solving that uh, truth dilemma, your life is in jeopardy, meaning it's in trouble. And then you are going to live a troubled life all throughout your life. 
without resolving this stress dilemma. Next paradox dilemma. And uh, if you have lived 20, 30 years or more, and there are many paradox in his life, then it's, it's a kind of dilemma. And example, of the concept of paradox is something seems that totally contra contrary and cannot exist together within the one linear logic, but it does exist within the logical frame. So that's paradox. I mean, see, the, the statement I made itself is paradox because uh, it has to exist. It cannot exist, exist within linear logic, but it does exist within the linear logic. So that statement itself is conflicting. It, it doesn't make contradicting and it doesn't make sense. So when we say it doesn't make sense, that means it's paradox. So how many things in your life that you have experienced, experience doesn't make sense? Me, me. And it's, when, when you say that, it's certainly, it's not only dilemma, it's a paradox. Life and death. Life and death cannot exist together. But Bible says, and your experience says, you're, li you're living, but you're dead. Have you ever experienced that? I mean, not physically dead, but you know you're dead, even though you're living. You're breathing and you're healthy, and, but you're just like a dead person. That, that happens, right? So that's paradox. How can life and death coexist at the same time? And good and evil, yeah, as you see the world, the evil still prevails. Well, good is there. And even within one person, not just someone else, I'm not uh, speaking of someone else, but yourself, myself. If you uh, see into your heart, there's good and evil. Because good and evil are motives, uh, as the Bible defines it. Good is motive to serve others, to give to others, to sacrifice for others, to love others. That's good, goodness. While the evil is to serve yourself, to, to satisfy your ego, to, to fulfill your, your uh, desire and your greed. That's evil. Or even go further, to use others for the favor of your own good. See? Your own gain, your own advantage. If you're using some people and you help make them to serve. See this vertical? The lower people, whatever that the lower is, need to serve you because you are on the top. That's the evil. See? Some people think, think evil is killing or stealing, but basically killing is a still, killing and stealing is only a behavioral part of evil. Your evil is inside, it's your motive. It's who you are. Because the Bible says the motivation, that's who you are. Do you know why, why Adam and Eve was kicked out of Eden? Because of that evil motive. They did not trust God. They, they wanted to serve their own evil, their own greed, their own desire. Once that happens, they, they can even break up with God. So the word, I mean, break up, that's a good word to understand the evil. So when evil, the, the human beings around you, the reality, the so-called uh, people around you are not just, they are not no longer human beings, they are 
resources. They are usable goods. Whether they are things, they, when they become things, the evil is there. So we know that evil and goodness that exist at the same time. As not even the different the time sequence, it happens at the same moment. So that's a paradox. And rich and poor, we know that rich is up there and poor are there. Even though God has given more than abundant for every and each person because of the human greed and human ego, it is limited to some people and it's more than enough to some people and they desire to have more. They continue to gather more. And not only gather, but they even take away from others. See, in, in, in Jesus' parable, uh, he talks about this, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, own, a farmer or shepherd uh, who owns 99 sheep, and he goes, 99 sheep, and goes after them person who has only one sheep and take that uh, sheep away from uh, him to make it hundred. See, this is uh, the rich and poor parable. Because God has given us more than enough to share. And when we share, then it will be abundant for each person. You, you can eat with the belly full and will still have remaining. Same thing with the, uh, the story of manna. Uh, while they, the Israelites came out of Egypt, when they were in the wilderness, they were asking for the food and God has given them something called the manna every day. And then God told them, just gather enough for a day, but that's enough for a day. And then some people gathered more than enough, and it rots. See, the uh, story tells about this paradox again. Okay, there's a generic dilemma. Uh, this this is uh, us human being experience within the about the existence. Okay, for example, question like what is the best? What is the best? So this is a general dilemma. Every person wants to choose the best and, and want to go that course. No one wants to suffer. And uh, no one wants to be the worst case scenario. Everyone wants the best scenario. And the question is, how do you know this is the best? Who defines that as the best? And if I, if you define it as the best, is it really the best? See, these are the, some of the dilemma questions. I believe this to be the best. And then just a few days later, you know and you, you have to admit that it wasn't the best. See, you have uh, all these experiences. Not even days, just right after the moment that you decided to uh, buy a certain thing and uh, you thought this is the best price, and then a uh, few minutes later you find out there is a better deal see even shopping you think it's the best and then you fall into a dilemma of knowing that this it, this wasn't the best what if that is your your job your life and your marriage see these these are a lot heavier than uh, spending few dollars right few dollars, you can just forget about it and, and do better next time. But 
When is it is about your job? When it is uh, your uh, relocation? What if it's about your children? What is it? What if it is about the limo about your uh, your marrying someone? See, these are the uh, I mean thousands and thousands of dilemmas in general life. Everyone, every people, as a human on earth, experience that dilemma. How to deal with the unknowns? The dilemma, general dilemma, mainly causes because we do not know the future. And there are things, not only the future, there are things that you do not know because our uh, the, the capacity and knowledge is limited. For example, let's go into example. Life decisions, I talked about it. Limited resources, you only have certain amount, amount of money. But you have to buy food. I mean, you are out of work because of this coronavirus thing. And you, you're only able to live unless you have that paycheck, uh, whether it's weekly or monthly. And if you don't have that and you don't have income, then you, you cannot buy food and you go hungry. See, the limited resources. You don't have all the money in the world. You can only earn certain amount of money per month, and even that money is not uh, not secure. So when you lose job, your so resources are critically limited, and then the values and priorities. Uh, many decisions that you have to make. It concerns. Uh, certain values. And you have, you should have life priorities. But can you stick with or remain with that value and that priori priorities? The reality says many times Forget about that value, forget about that priority, but do the right thing. Right thing meaning immediately giving you the satisfaction. So that is called temptation for Christians. So immediate gratification or satisfaction many times goes against your values and priority. Now the question is, why do we do that? It's a dilemma. Your dilemma. Our, our dilemma in decision making and behaviors and actions. When you make good decisions, you're going to act out. Sometimes you hesitate to act even though it, you know it's, it's the right thing according to your value. But it is difficult for you to act out. Why is that? There is a dilemma between your desire and the reality. So that reality may say people may look you as a foolish person if you do so. If you pray at the uh, dinner table when all others are not uh, Christian then you may offend them says your uh, one desire but it is right thing to offer a prayer to God giving thanks for the meal daily meal that God provides you the reason that we pray is just give thanks and give thanks for the grace of the table. So everyone who's eating at this table should be blessed, whether they are Christian or not. 
So we have a good intention, and then there's a, another uh, desire uh, uh, or fear saying, well, you shouldn't do that. You should not offend these uh, people. See, so these things are some of the generic uh, dilemma uh, we face as a person. The reason for this dilemma, point of view, it comes from human incapacity. So I'm actually, this is uh, the Christian uh, would do the same. We are limited. The Bible says we are limited. We are built just like God in His image, meaning we have all these good characters, good personalities, and good desires. On the other hand, God has limited us. We cannot be everywhere, just like God is. We, we do not know everything, just like God does. We cannot do everything, but God can do everything. That's the difference. So, th that way, we are limited. Now, we are limited due to our own inequity, and we can live only 100, 120 years at the max. Okay, that's human incapacity. Mystery, some of the things are beyond our rational explanation. It's not, it's a mystery because it's not visible. It's a mystery because it cannot be resolved. It is a mystery because it cannot be explained with a rational explanation. So there are some things of this nature. In, even in 21st century, everything is so scientific. Every, everything is so uh, possible to validate with the, all the physical and uh, all the tools, DNA test and all these things. Still, there are things that we cannot explain and we call that a mystery. And uh, I'm sure you have experienced many of these mysteries in your life. And uh, still, I mean, still you cannot, many of those things happened in your life, those mysteries, you cannot explain. But the major mystery is that God has given his own life to save us from our sin. Not his sin, but the sins that I have caused and the death that I have inflicted to myself. So that's the mystery. Unknown. Some of the things that are secret uh, to a human being, some of things are hidden. And even if you try hard, they are still unknown. For example, we have billions and billions of stars nearest star take, takes about a year uh, with the, the speed of light. But many stars are reach, reachable with the uh, speed of uh, light speed for many million years. <laughs> million years that you, you run at the speed of light and you, you can reach those. And there are many of those stars, many, most of them bigger than this earth. And you know, you don't know if there is anything living in there. There might be. Bible doesn't say anything about it. It doesn't deny or it does not confirm. So even with the Bible, it's unknown. So our 
ability, our intellectual, our knowledge is limited and there are many things that are unknown. That's, that's, that causes us so much issues. And the only thing we can say is, yes, we are limited. We cannot know everything. And you humble yourself. That's who we are. We cannot be God. And ignorance. Ignorance is different from uh, unknown in, in, in sense that the knowledge is already there. The people does not acquire, has not acquired that knowledge. That's his or her fault, being ignorant. Because table is there with all the food prepared and cooked, and you are only need to take your uh, spoon and chopsticks and uh, take it and eat it. And if you don't eat it, then it's your responsibility. Many of these, uh, the, the incapacity has to do with ignorance. See, the reason I'm saying this is, there's a Bible, there's a thick book, yeah, it's 66 uh, small books uh, put together. And many do not have the knowledge of the Bible because they haven't read it. They haven't read it. They only heard about it little piece by little piece. And they have, uh, have no idea uh, about the whole Bible. See, that's ignorance. And you cannot blame anyone else for not telling you the truth. The Bible is in uh, several thousand different languages. So you have no uh, excuse for not being, not, uh, not reading the Bible. See, this is ignorance. And it, costs, it can cost your life. Indifference. Indifference means you have no interest, no desire. And this is bad. I mean, mystery and unknown, that's beyond your control. You have excuse because it's unknown and it's mystery. It's beyond our uh, capacity. But some of the incapacity, inability, is caused by our own decision, uh, by all our own making. So this indifference is one of them. People just give no interest to these matters, even though these matters are very important for their life, for the life of the community, and for the life of the family, and life of others. These are the important matters, and they, are, they give no interest because they are only obsessed with himself or herself. When that happens, they are indifferent to the other people and in the other world. They are not able to sense the emotions and the needs of others. And sadly enough, some of the modern churches that we see fall into this issue of indifference. They are not interested in the life of the world. And they believe the world is evil. World is secure. So you 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 are to have no part in these. See, when that happens, and that's the case. It's sad, but this indifference can cause your life. Meaning, I mean, not just uh, this life, but it can cause your, cost your existence. So how are you going to enrich or uh, the, the make it worthwhile of your existence? 
That's where the world view comes in. That's where the Christian world view comes in. Christian world view says, this is how you live. This is how God sees the reality. And this is the answer, God's answer, about some of the realities that you face. See? So, that's important. Complexity. Uh, human issues are complex. The issues itself, it's not that simple. You can list just a couple uh, main issues and they have conflict to one another. With, regarding this uh, COVID-19 situation, see, let me tell you, human issues. Some people have to live, make a living. To do so, you have to lift up this uh, stay home, shelter home uh, order. So go out and protest. But while they are protesting, it invites uh, the spread of coronavirus. See, this is a dilemma. And this is complexity of human issues. And so how, how are you going to make a decision and the worldview? It is your worldview that makes that uh, decision. And you cannot have everything. You cannot have all things. You have to sacrifice one to get the other. That's complexity of human issues. And also complex reality of the universe. The reality is more than nature. It includes people. The reality includes uh, human, uh, the, the history. History is your narrative. The narrative of your existence. Narrative of your, your people, whether you're Korean, Chinese, Japanese. Uh, you have your narrative. That's your reality. And see, I mean, history alone is very complex. And uh, the history of uh, Chang Dynasty or Han Dynasty that affects your existence today, even though you may not uh, fully agree. Uh, so the history, the North and South Korea divided, that affects my narrative because uh, all my grandfathers, uh, other than my own grandfather, there are uh, other uh, grand grandfathers, uncles. Uh, five of them are in North Korea. So I cannot see them. I never met them. And probably they are all dead now. But their, their sons and sons Sons, sons, and their grandchildren, they are in North Korea, and I, I never met them and even know them. So this, this is reality of the universe, and it's very complex. And many answers and claims, because that there are so many world views. They say these are the right answers. These are the uh, truth, and, uh, and it makes you very confused and it is complex and diversity spectrum uh, the thing is people even though we have something called the shared world view even within let's say uh, within a Korean culture uh, within South Korea uh, and, 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 and in this community of Seoul and uh, age group uh, 60 and over male well educated i mean within even within that limitation there are several factors five factors limiting the population still within that category there are many diverse aspects male and female young and old and having more and having less. These are the diversity factors. When 
people are diverse, that automatically creates a different world view. Because these diverse factors affect the formulation and establishment of your world view. So human diversity causes the, the complexity. And it is our job to understand this complex nature of the world view. But while acknowledging the complexity, we are trying to come up with the right answers. So this is for today. And thank you for listening and watching. And have a wonderful and nice uh, week. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. See you. God bless.